Alrighty, I'm I'm gonna be hopping into one of my least favorite debate topics uh, that I'm honestly look look there are there are two debate topics uh, on Twitter that I am very tired of seeing. Uh, and I've been seeing them for four years, basically ever since I became an atheist YouTuber. I've been seeing these two fucking topics, and I am I am so sick of them. The first one is, are rocks atheists? And the answer to that is, shut the fuck up. The second one is, is religion a mental illness? And I'll expound on that one a little bit more. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into the fan art section before we do that. This one is from Memory Martin. They said, edit, got the skin and most of the clothes done, debating on the shoes and the hat to match the dress uh, or go for a classic red. And this is a chibi winter cirrus that is a work in progress. So, thank you very much for the fan art, Memory Martin. If you want your fan art to be shown on a future episode, the best way to do so is drop it into the fan art section of the Discord. I'm about to bash my head into a wall, so let's go ahead and roll the intro. <laughs> Okay. First, on the R Rocks Atheists. No, fucking stop, please. Just shut, shut, shut the fuck up. Rocks do not have the capacity to form belief. So not non-belief is not a thing they can form. Okay, okay. Cool, cool. We're good. People who think rocks are atheists are dumb as rocks. We're not, we're not, we're not having that conversation, okay? The actual answer to that is you're fucking dumb. If you're having that argument, you're fucking dumb, okay? Cool. Now, on to the next one. On to the next really, really dumb argument that I am I'm very sick of. This is prefaced because as as with everything, this comes up on my Twitter timeline. So let's go ahead and play the the TikTok that is in reference to this, read the thing, and then we'll we'll get into my just exas exasperated pontifications. Let's go. Listen, Jesus is coming back, and we don't have a lot of time. I don't know the date. I don't know the... At what point is it mental illness? I'm, I'm serious. At what point is it mental illness? Listen... Okay, so... Is it cringy when Christians are constantly going... <gasps> God is going to come at any moment like he's the fucking Lord of Edging or something. Yes, that is cringy. Yes, it's actually stupid. I'm, 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 I know normally I give a little more philosophical backing when it comes to stuff like this, but seriously, you people who do the apocalyptic freak out about everything, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, it is dumb. It is incredibly dumb, and I know that there's not a whole lot to be said past that, but quite honestly, if you do not know when your Lord is coming and you're already saved, just, just hush. <laughs> I, it is obnoxious, but obnoxious, a mental illness does not make. So, we have a, now I'm not saying respond to this person, this is an example where I've seen a bunch of other issues, uh, but wasn't able to save it, so I had to screen record. It deserves a boost of fellow anti-theists to see it on Twitter. For most people, I believe it is a mental illness. Do you agree? And the answer that I will say is, as somebody who has no problem taking the anti-theist moniker insofar as it can be construed as anti-harm, no, I don't fucking agree. I'm sorry. Mental illness and an opinion are not the same thing. Now, I know that there are better creators on the platform to go into the nitty gritty and the specifics on why it is definitely not a mental illness. But let's talk about what a mental illness is real quick, okay? Now, first, to talk about mental illness, we need to talk about mental health. Mental health involves the ability to function in daily activities. Productive activities like work, school, or caregiving, healthy relationships, ability to adapt, change, and cope with adversity. That has to do with your mental health. Without any mental illnesses, your mental health can be affected by something. Your stress levels, your anxiety levels, these things can affect your mental health. Can there be an argument that various religions can have a negative effect on one's mental health? Absolutely. That is not the same thing as mental illness. What is a mental illness? 
collectively any diagnosable mental disorder or health condition involving significant changes in thinking, emotion, and or behavior, and distress and or problems functioning in social work or family activities. But specifically, these have to come down to, uh, on a neurological level. This means these are things affecting your synapses. These are things affecting chemical levels in your brain. Now, why does that matter? Well, whether I am or am not religious will not affect the chemical levels of jack shit in my brain in a significant way that could not be affected otherwise. For instance, yes, your dopamine levels might be triggered more whenever you happen to be in a church and you're singing a hymn, but those dopamine levels can be triggered by literally any happy thing that you engage in. The religion is a non-factor there. If we were to talk about different types of mental illnesses, we can do that. And just to make sure that I'm not fucking up here. Mental illnesses are things like anxiety disorders, panic disorders, obsessive compulsion disorders, depression, bipolar disorders, other mood disorders, eating disorders, personality disorders, post-traumatic stress disorder, psychotic disorders, like schizophrenia. These are mental disorders. Disorders, mind you. They are not necessarily mental illness. Mental illness are things like antisocial personality disorder. Stuff like that. There's a lot of things that are similar here in these groupings. But what matters is that these are all things that affect you on a fundamental level. These are all things that are well and outside your control. I cannot control whether or not I have anxiety. I cannot control whether or not I have PTSD. I cannot control whether or not I have a psychotic disorder. But you know what I can control? My religion. Whether or not I have a religion, I can control. And this makes something fundamentally very fucking different. If I cannot control my anxiety, I can mitigate it, I can cope with it, but I cannot stamp it out. But I can stamp out my religion by simply not engaging in one. I, I'm just not religious, therefore I don't have this problem. You're assuming that there is a mental illness called subscribes to a religion that can be cured by merely not subscribing to a religion. Boy howdy, I wish other actual mental disorders worked like that. If I could just not subscribe to having anxiety. Believe me, my interpersonal relationships would be incredibly improved by me not having anxiety. But, categorically, religion does not follow these things. Now, you can say that somebody can be deluded by religion. Sure, why not? If their religion tells them that there's an apocalypse looming on the corner uh, every six months, and that apocalypse never manifests, and yet they are continually uh, convinced that the apocalypse is going to happen, then yes, by all means, tell somebody that they are deluded. Tell somebody that they are misinformed. But to tell them that they have a mental illness, something that is largely uncontrollable, only something you can cope with, something you can mitigate, but not something you can stamp out, is to further stigmatize mental illness. People who have mental illnesses, and of this fun list, I at the very least have one. We struggle with these things every day not in the same way that religiosity exists. Now, can an argument be made that certain forms of religiosity can exacerbate mental illness? Oh, absolutely. If you already have an anxiety disorder, then fear of hell is going to prey on that. If you already have depression, feeling like you don't measure up to whatever you know God wants you to be is going to prey on that. If you have a psychotic disorder then it might be very easy for religiosity to be a factor in whether or not you have a psychotic break and start hurting people. Yes, but these are not the same things as having a mental illness. This is an outside factor 
which just like when I pointed out the dopamine increasing in your brain when you happen to be in the middle of a church, there are other outside factors that can trigger all these things. A psychotic break can be triggered by a breakup, by random things happening. A anxiety disorder can be triggered by practically anything. I should know I lost a career to the damn thing. Religiosity can be a help in some of these situations, or it can be a hindrance in them, just like family can be a help or a hindrance in these situations. If you want to argue that a religion is wrong about a particular thing, by all means, do that. If you want to argue that somebody who is religious is using their religion as a cudgel and hurting other people, by all means, do that. But none of that makes it a mental illness. None of that makes it a mental disorder. None of that means that you believing that a god existing or you being part of a group of people who happen to have an opinion on a form of theism is the same thing as an anxiety disorder or a depression disorder or a bipolar disorder. Categorically, these do not function the same way. Stepping into a church and accepting being part of that community does not magically change the chemical balance in my brain. If you think that it does, then you've given an argument as an anti-theist to the religious person that you're trying to argue against in the first place. Because now, suddenly joining their religion does have a significant change in their brain patterns. Which is something that, generally speaking, anti-theists argue religion does not do. We point out that religion can be replaced by a variety of other community and coping mechanisms. And yet, certain very, very dumb anti-theists try to have their cake and eat it too. Now, there's another aspect to this over and above the category error, over and above the fact that these things just merely do not function the same way. There's also the feeling of superiority that goes hand in hand with the stigmatization. If you're an anti-theist, again, when we define anti-theism as anti-harm, then I'm perfectly fine accepting that label myself. But if you call yourself this type of person... It's okay to be against a thing, but if you think that you're better than somebody on the whole, like as a net positive, merely because you lack religiosity, I'm sorry, you're not. I have met some very, very terrible people who happen to be atheists, and I have met some very wonderful people who happen to be Christian. Your religiosity might be able to be a correlative factor into whether or not you are a better or worse person, but it will never be a causative one. At the end of the day, for every uh, Kenneth Copeland, you can also find an atheism as unstoppable. You're going to be able to find somebody who uses their position religious affiliation or otherwise, to fuck people over or to make their lives better. Trying to say that religion is a mental illness at the end of the day stigmatizes people who actually have mental illnesses. It gives you a feeling of superiority over this person, and it also is just engaging in pseudoscience. You believe, when you make a statement like that, that... An opinion on the existence of God or an opinion on the affiliation you should have as a result of your an existence of God. An opinion has an actual effect on the chemical balance of your brain. And that's not how mental illnesses work. And if you continue to think that then you're just creating a worse world for people who actually have mental illnesses. Because the idea is that people with mental illnesses are in the bad category. This goes hand in hand with that superiority complex. 
when you argue that somebody's in that bad category now, somebody who has an anxiety disorder, a depression disorder, somebody who happens to have, even if it's treated, schizophrenia or any other disorder, they're not going to want to come to you. They're not going to want to be honest with you about these things that they may be suffering from. You may be able to help one of these people, but they're not going to be looking for your help because you've already shown that you can't be trusted with that information because you've already taken a stance of superiority against people who you deem mentally ill. It's a lot like that old saying, if you want to know how somebody actually is, then see how they treat their wait staff. See how they treat people who are categorically on a lower hierarchical rung, even if it's only for the amount of time that they happen to be clocked in. See how they treat them. A lot of times, you can tell whether somebody's actually a worthwhile person by how they treat their wait staff. Likewise, you can tell if somebody's a worthwhile person by how they treat people that they think are inferior. Moreover, if they categorically separate people into positions of inferiority to begin with, well, that tells you a lot more about the person than the category they tried to create. At the end of the day, these are two conversations I am tired of having. I'm tired of seeing our atheists rocks. Shut the fuck up. There's a thousand more important conversations to be had within the atheist sphere than fucking rocks. But that conversation isn't actually damaging. If you want to have that one for fun, go, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Just don't break your teeth when you chew on the rocks. When it comes to the latter conversation, the one about mental illness, you are causing real harm to people when you think that religiosity somehow is a mental illness. I know this has been rambly. I know this has been less informed as other videos that I've done. But quite frankly, every time I see this argument on Twitter, I want to slam my head into a wall, rip it out, and then throw it back in because at least there's safety in concussions. But, anywho, if you want to support the stuff that I do here on the internet, for better or worse, there's ways to do so in the description. If you want to... Check out my secondary channels, uh, both Sunset City, the podcast that I run with Wayne is Boss and Channel Pup and a Game Apologist. Or if you want to check out Necosurus, where I talk about video games, links to those are in the description as well. That wall is looking very, very good. Insert end of video tagline here. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. It really means a lot to me. If you want access to behind the scenes content for the channel, please consider checking out my Patreon. I do weekly vlogs over there where I give uh, real life updates to what's going on behind the scenes on the channel, stuff that you don't really get uh, over here and, and even on Twitch. Uh, Patreon also helps the channel's stability a whole lot. Without Patreon, I wouldn't be able to do this at all. Especially with the kind of content that I do, neither YouTube nor Twitch are the most stable sources of income. If you are a $20 and up patron, then you will be featured on the ending slides as shown in the beginning of the end credits. If you want to catch the streams where all this content comes from, then consider heading over to Twitch and following. And if you want to continue watching over here on YouTube, maybe consider clicking one of the end screen videos. And once again, I want to thank you so much for spending your time with me over on my channel. I wouldn't be able to do literally anything that I'm doing over here on YouTube without each and every one of you. So thank you.